I started flinging this bear and the hair stood up on my neck and, and I and I turned around and there was this huge brown bear about 20 feet from me. And I'm freaking out and I'm whistling and shouting and I'm shoving slugs in my shotgun and I'm 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 definitely, you know, it's one of those cases you're trying to grab your gun and your pants at the same time. It's it's wrong. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Discovering the Last Frontier. Um, your host, Lucas. On today's episode, we're going to be chatting with one of our good friends from Homer, Alaska. But before we introduce our guest, Mr. Troy Jinky, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good, Luke. Thanks for asking. Um, we've had a really busy, busy winter getting ready for the upcoming season. Uh, we've done lots of fun things, lots of work, lots of fun work. Uh, we've done a bunch of uh, modifications to our boat, the Bohemian Queen. Um, our wives are both Bohemian, so we named it after our two queens, uh, Laney and Rock, the Bohemian Queen. So yeah, we've done some some fun modifications to that boat. We put on a new jib. Uh, we put on uh, some new downriggers. We put um, a new ladder for some of our hiking excursions so people can get on and off the boat much easier. Um and some of the more fun things we've got to do as a fisherman, we've been able to uh, do quite a bit of uh, shopping for fishing gear. So we got new reels, new poles, fishing <laughs> gear. Uh, the fisherman, there's I'm like a kid in a candy store doing stuff like that. So that's been a lot of fun. So yeah, it's been a busy winter, but uh, lots of fun. Well, very, very cool. Thanks for uh, kind of getting everyone up to speed on what we've been up to. So today's guest really requires no introduction for fans of popular reality shows set in Alaska. This star of Alaska, The Last Frontier, is of Swiss descent and a lifelong resident of Alaska. He loves to tinker with pretty much anything that has bearings. He also spends a lot of time as the captain of the Nanook and uh, hanging out on the homestead. So please welcome the man whose motor is constantly running, Otto Kilcher. Hey, good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon, Troy. Good to well, see you hello. guys. Hello, Otto. Uh, how the heck are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, I'd like to say, you know, uh, last, I got up this morning and all five of my personalities were doing just great. So, getting on all five cylinders today, Baba. Awesome. Well, you heard uh, Troy's update on how we're doing with the boat and getting ready for the uh, upcoming season. Uh, what are some of the projects you've been working on around the homestead this winter? Oh, man, guys, it's been cold, cold, cold. And and uh, we've been working on the house a bit. Um you know, I think we're on our, oh, good heaven, 97 to our 25th, sixth year now working on this hair house. And uh, starting to get the kitchen put together for our main living area. Still working, uh, you know, getting up in the morning, plowing roads, feeding cows, and um, just projects. Mostly just projects uh, and enjoying every day. Well, that's awesome. That is very awesome. So... You know, Otto. Uh, you know, when you watch you watch the shows, it's it's pretty obvious you're the you're the kind of guy that um, loves to fix things, love to f figure out how things work. You love to tinker with uh, with different projects. What? When did you realize you were going to be the kind of guy that loved to fix things and was and realized that you were really good at it? I I, I never really had the the aha moment, you know. Uh, but I got to say, looking back. Uh, uh, I think I've just always had a curiosity how things worked. And I think I've always been uh, visual and really observant. And so, um, oh boy, um, you know, I, I'd say, you know, kids love to play with Legos. Uh, out here on the homestead, the world was my Lego. You know? Yeah, you know, when all the little pieces fit together is... Uh, just amazing it, it's not only a curiosity and it's just awesome it's just beyond awesome yeah you know when we worked on you in the, on a couple projects um it was intriguing to watch you uh you know even when we were hauling sand up the up the hill for our sewer just how watching you figure out the best route and and all the little inter intricacies uh it, that was a pretty unique moment in our adventure too so that was fun so you know back to the homestead what when when did you realize that you had a real passion for animals and raising animals? Was this a uh, something you're born with, a passion that you grew grew into, uh, learned behavior? Where did that come from? Uh, I'd say pretty much absolutely not. I 
I think I, I learned to like animals uh, through abandonment. Uh, my brother uh, was older than me, four or five years older, and when he got ready to go in the Army, one of his last words is he just shook his head and said, I don't know how you're going to, how this place is going to manage uh, with you. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, he was dumbfounded. But uh, when we grew up, we had uh, younger years, we used to have a team of horses. But my younger years, we only had one old plow horse left. And only the senior family members got to ride that horse. So I, I did a lot of short marathons. Anywhere, anywhere the horse went, I went, like a little dog next to it. And uh, we had a mean golden retriever that liked to bite. And at one time, a neighbor came out, had an Afghan hound. It bit me on the face. And, uh, you know, to me, animals were work, lots and lots of work. But, uh, you know, being suddenly at, at the age of 17 or younger, really, suddenly being dumped on you, you're kind of the responsible person on the farm. You start working with animals more and more. And, and I figured out that actually I was a little better at it than my brother was worried I'd, I, I wouldn't be. And uh, you just start to get your favorite horse or your favorite cow, or you start to understand. And, and a bit, but I say mostly through observation. And, and you realize how these critters exist out there in the, in the cold, cold winter without a clothes, without a TV, without a, everything, you know, on their own. And you, you just learn this incredible respect for the animals and you watch how they function. And, uh, you know, the birds, the bees, the critters, they're, uh, they're just an amazing bunch of companions, uh, and it fills out the homestead. That's awesome. You know, um, speaking of, of animals, um, one of the things that visitors to Alaska can anticipate are wildlife encounters, both on land and on water. This past year, I actually had a pretty close encounter with a Kodiak brown bear uh, while I was hunting blacktail on Uganic Island, and I'll certainly talk about that on an episode down the road. It's a it's a story in and of itself. This past fall, Troy, you had a pretty interesting day on the water as well when you uh, encountered uh, a pod of orcas uh, while trolling salmon in Ketchumac Bay. Tell us about that afternoon and, and that encounter, which was pretty darn close. It was kind of a neat afternoon. We were we were trolling uh, for salmon uh, near a place near Bear Cove, and uh, Lainey had sent me a text. My wife had sent me a text uh, that she thought she had seen a uh, an orca in the bay, and sure enough, she she sent another one saying, "For sure, it's an orca. Um, keep your eyes out. He's going to come out of the bay and should be headed towards you guys when we're fishing." So we were actually doing pretty well fishing. So we were focused on that, but I had my cousin with, and uh, she was pretty excited about seeing an orca. So she spotted the tail or the, the, the fin. And, uh, you know, she made the decision that we're going to get a little closer. You know? So we pulled everything up and um, we, we trolled over towards the, the orca a little bit. We probably were within about 250, 300 yards at the time. And that orca came right up to us. And uh, he um, came out of the water, probably 15 feet behind the boat. Blue scared the heck out of us in the, in the back of the boat, swam around us, swam underneath the boat, and then came up again, kind of disappeared, came up again behind the boat. He got so close that we could literally touch the fin on, on the back. And uh, I tell you what, it was, it the heart was beaten. That's a big animal. <laughs> uh, so that was exciting. It was, it was the closest experience I've had to, to a whale ever. And it, uh, it was an incredible experience. We've got some great videos of it on our site. You'll have to check it out. Very cool. So Otto, I know you've spent and continue to spend a fair amount of time on the waters of Ketchumac Bay and in the backcountry. Um, what are some of the more interesting wildlife encounters you've had uh, in the area during your travels? Oh boy. I appreciate hearing that, Troy. Uh, you know, those are the kind of things that the guys, uh, chuckle about afterwards uh, i had a situation years ago hunting ducks where uh, i saw a, a black bear i had a black bear license with me and i i saw a black bear in the distance and we hadn't had any luck duck hunting so i thought wow maybe i can get this duck and this black bear anyway and he came closer and closer and i crouched down and waited and realized this black bear was circling me and then I uh, went, wow, I, I, I be able to shoot this thing. It's getting pretty close. And then I stood up and looked, and then there was two circling me, one <laughs> on each side of me. I'm thinking, well, maybe 
Maybe this is not such a good place to be. So I decided to shoot one of these two black bears, and I, and then two more little black bears ran away. No. So there was three circling me. And um, so I proceeded to start cleaning that little black bear. It was very dark, very dark weather, rainy, and uh, it was a very dark colored black bear. Anyway, uh, I started cleaning this bear, and the hair stood up on my neck, and, and I and I turned around, and there was this huge brown bear about 20 feet from me. Mm. And uh, that bear wanted my, wanted my black bear. And I'm freaking out, and I'm whistling and shouting, and I'm shoving slugs in my shotgun, and I'm 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 definitely you know one of those cases you're trying to grab your gun and your pants at the same time. It's it's wrong. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the bear finally took off, and I, I I dragged the bear all the way to the river, and I was so proud of myself. Went back to camp and told my friends about this bear, and we went to get it. And I uncovered it. I had a poncho on it. And when I uncovered it, my friend David looked at it and went, Otto, it's not a black bear. It's a brown bear cub. Oh, God. That's why there was so much anger. Mama was a little bit upset. Oh, man. Uh, but I wanted to tell you, uh, you know, nature is just incredible. And again, how those animals make it without all of our human technology, uh, you know, by the way, we live shouldn't be shouldn't be possible. Um, but two years ago was the first time I've got pictures somewhere. It was the first time in my life I ever see a, a humpback whale fully breach, not maybe a hundred yards from the Nanook. It was paralleling us, and then it came up, and it was maybe only a, a little bit of its tail. One of its sides of its tail was all in the water, and to see that huge animal come plumb out of the water, and then the splash. That is glorious. Yeah. Oh, that is cool. Thanks for sharing those stories, yeah, Otto. Than, uh, wildlife, you learn to respect and watch out for the wildlife. But, uh, you know, I've learned to, to respect the domestic animals, too, obviously, because they're the ones that are actually the unexpected ones. You know, you know, Otto, you've been a lifelong resident of Alaska. Um but a fair, a fair amount of your time, obviously, on the coastal waters, and, you, and you've got tons of experiences um, you know, what would you say as someone who wants to visit Homer, wants to visit uh, Alaska, what's a must do experience that um, somebody you think should do uh, if they're going to visit the Kenai Peninsula, let's say? Wow. I'm going to say, um, obviously, if you're a fisherman, which I'm not, obviously, you you really probably got to go catch a fish, you know. Um, and it seems everybody wants to go see Denali. but and of course, McNeil River has always been a famous bear place, but there are bears in places other than McNeil, uh, maybe even as good or better bear viewing. And, uh, you know, Denali is the biggest, grooviest mountain. And, and, and so it's nice to see that because you go, I've seen it. I've been there, done that. And, and at my age, I have things on my list that ah, you know, I want to get a pilot's license so I can fly an airplane for 10 minutes. And put it in my, put it on my check, check off, check off. I, I don't think I want to be a pilot, but I want to be able to tell myself I've done that. So uh, there is definitely the fishing. We have great mountains around here, but I, I usually tell people, um, just don't be in such a hurry. Go someplace and stay a few days with someone. Just settle down, and then Alaska will come to you. Don't force it. That's one thing I tell them. And another thing I tell them, if you know, drive up on the hills behind Homer or get a flight sea, get up high somewhere where you can get a real bird's eye view. And so uh, you can really see where you're at. Get get familiar with your surroundings. Get familiar with the, the real people. I know if you can remove yourself a notch or two from the tourist traps, it's what you got to do. It's where the real life starts. Today's sponsor, Bear Cove Retreat. Let Bear Cove Retreat be your guide as you embark upon your dream Alaskan coastal adventure. Their off-the-grid, all-inclusive retreat is the perfect option for folks seeking a journey with unique experiences in a serene setting. Visit www.bearcoveretreat.com for more details.
You know, the Homer is kind of, there's a song where you know, the land ends and the sea begins and, and the end of the road, that kind of thing. Well, that's the, the visual part of it. But as you know, any end of the road has its share of riffraff as well as its charm. But the idea is to get a couple of notches beyond that if you can. Yeah, I get it. And then, of course, the trick is not to bring it with you. Screw it up. <laughs> Screw it up. Right. Good point. Uh, another one for you, Otto. You know, your show has highlighted, you, you know, all your experiences and all the challenges that all Alaskans face um, living on the homestead, living this type of Alaskan lifestyle. What keeps you motivated to want to live on the homestead? And, you know, what makes you, some people would say, why wouldn't you just want to head south and go relax on a beach? Oh, you know, uh, there are times, to coin a catchphrase, you dang, I wish I could quit you. There are times when uh, you get up in the morning after having just shoveled and plowed all the snow you can shovel and there's another foot. It gets pretty disillusioning. And then maybe suddenly the northern lights come out and it's like, oh, yeah. Or you look across and see the mountains. There's a beauty here. It's a rugged beauty. But I think, in truth, what, what keeps me here is this lifestyle affords me the most magnificent sense of adventure. Uh, every day, something interesting new happens. Every day, there's great friends, and there's just uh, there's uh, some something really cool happens in every one of my days, and that would wouldn't happen to me on some golf course down in Tucson, you know. As far as life, life on the edge, life right now, yeah, giving me the opportunity to, to for another adventure, or a new challenge, or Evans pray not another near-death adventure but you know <laughs> it really is those those terrible moments that make you appreciate the great moments and uh like they say you take rain to create a rainbow mm. not living in the rainbow folks <laughs> awesome so beyond uh what you've been doing on the homestead this winter what's next for Otto? do you have any traveling uh that you're planning on doing over the coming months yeah, I want to go uh, visit some friends I've made over the years, and uh, and and uh, some of the film crew have been just the best. I've made some great, great friends in the process. We just got another new, different boat. Uh, it's another landing craft. Uh, it's a little bigger and better, and uh, I'm I'm kind of back in the freight hauling business a little bit. Uh, and uh, going to do a little traveling, and um, yeah, going to go down uh, visit my. Son, Levi, go visit the grandkids. And um, good heavens. The, you know, I think what I'm planning is just spending more time. I, I, I don't know if you might know recently, a few years ago, I had a terrible injury uh, with a cow attacked me. Mm -hmm. And I think what I got out of that was just this incredible appreciation and love for life and a really, really appreciation for my really, really close friends. And I, and I think I've rearranged my uh, definition of friend and family and who really matters to me. So uh, spending more time with the people I love is just high on my list, wherever they are and whoever they are, giving to them and getting back from them and then, then embarking on little adventures together. So sharing a new adventure today with your best friends can't get any better than that. Yeah. You know, and that's great advice for everyone, Otto. And, and, it's unfortunate you had the experience that you had, but, you know, it, it gave you a perspective that hopefully will carry you forward here and, and make things uh, really enjoyable for you. I'd like to just expand on that for a minute. I got to say that, you know, uh, for instance, uh, we can plan, we can plan an adventure, so to speak. So we could plan on you and me and Troy going out on the water and let's go fishing. And that's a plan. But you can't plan on seeing that whale. You got to get out there enough times to see the whale. That's the adventure. And I, I maintain there's an adventure in every day. If you get out there into it, and they usually happen when you're not looking for them. For sure. <laughs> Learning how not to look and not to expect the adventure is when they pop up. And they're not always good, but they're sure as hell of an adventure. Right. Get the hell out of you, right, Troy? That's right. You've got that right. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very true. It's time in the saddle. That's what I've found. Just time in the saddle out here on the water, in the woods, up on the mountains. And, and it's when you least expect it. That's when it happens. 
um, which is just awesome. But yeah, it's key to be out there, out there doing things and experiencing things. Very cool. Thanks for that. That's awesome perspective, Otto. Appreciate that. Um, how about any future plans for the TV show or other ventures that you're involved with where maybe fans can catch up with you and the things that you're doing day in and day out? Oh, man, I'm so glad you brought that up. You know, long before TV, I'd find myself in the flipping auto situation and I think I should record that. That should have been filmed, <laughs> you know. And I thought I had a friend that was dabbling in the cinematography. I said, yeah, I ought to do a show called Follow Auto. Because you follow me for a day, you're going to find something go wrong or go right or somewhere both maybe. And so yeah, my plans now are we're starting a uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we're starting to post heavy time on Facebook and and Instagram. And uh, I and uh, some friends, uh, we got August, we got Jacob, we got Katie and and basically my core family, uh, we're going to just uh, head off on a on a daily adventure and try to share that with my fans and my friends because I really kind of truly miss that sharing the things I know and uh, sharing my adventures and my experience. But there isn't a time that I don't learn something as well. So it's very reciprocal. And um, that's that's actually our new big adventure. Uh, I'm excited to be working uh, this year. Going to spend a little more time with you guys, so that's going to be exciting. Yeah, I was excited. Yeah, this. absolutely. <laughs> try to catch me my first fish. We'll get you one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're gonna put money on this one. I'll bet, <laughs> bet you won't catch a fish with me on the boat. Otto's been trying to tell me that for years, Troy, that anytime he's on the boat, all all catching basically ceases. He's just the worst luck there is. So I'm really hoping to prove him wrong. So we got we to gotta work out some real special spots that we can take him at the right time. He's like uh, bringing bananas on the boat. Huh? Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll bring Otto and bananas and they'll cancel each other out yeah. and we'll just hammer the fish. I don't know. We got to try something. So Otto, your YouTube channel, that's uh, Otto Kilcher is the name of the channel i believe <laughs> and uh <laughs> from, from what i understand talking to katie and jacob you're going to be releasing two three episodes a week here as you get going and and i know you did a little bit of filming today with with august and katie uh how's that going so far um d do you enjoy oh, it oh boy uh i just i just got all the content in the world I, you know i ain't got to make much stuff up i'm gonna hit my finger twice in the same day with a hammer and I, I hope not to hit it once, but if it's, if, you, if if I do it, you'll probably see it. <laughs> but um, it, it's actually uh, coming along good. Looking directly at the lands, it's a little awkward. Uh, you know, I've been trained so long to answer questions in such a certain way with the Discovery Show. It's a lot more free, and I hope to be able to get in the knack of just explaining to people what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Uh, it seems that uh, August is pretty good at. The filming, I think Katie's having a little bit of learning curve going, wow, I'm not used to being on this side of the camera. So uh, <laughs> you know, it's a learning curve, but it's what an adventure, and we're really excited about it. Really excited about it. Uh, August is going to be doing a lot of editing, Katie, and then also a friend of ours, Jacob, is uh, really a techie. He knows all the stuff, so I don't know anything. I don't know anything about that stuff. I'm just going to be me, and I'm going to trust that they're going to do their their them yeah uh, yeah you know that's I awesome was, you know, learned something the other day and it was such stressful and i said i'd rather learn to fly a helicopter than do this it's exhausting it's hard <laughs> on another one of our sponsors today is story film productions would you like some assistance filming a podcast or starting a youtube channel Maybe you're looking for someone to help create a commercial for your business, product, or service. Story Film Productions can help. This Minnesota-based company can help you tell your story in an impactful way through the art of videography. Visit www.storyfilmproductions.com to set up a free consultation to discuss your video or editing needs. 
that's great. I've checked out a little bit of it so far, and uh, it's all really exciting. You know what? What I like about it, Otto, is you talked about it before. You know, sometimes the adventure. You know, you just got to be out there and and let it find you. And I think you're gonna have more opportunity to do that uh, with this format, right? You can just be out there doing your thing, and some of the most exciting things will probably just happen. You know, and, and yeah, it's not based I, on a schedule. Today, uh, we were out in the corral filming this little cow daisy she's very tame and we were just filming her and all of a sudden right in front of us this horse decides to roll and she gets her foot caught in a corral and she's just having a flop around and it's like yo how did this just happen i'm not even sure we got it got it on the camera it was so scary and it happened so suddenly but uh well good heavens this homesteading life is just full of adventure misadventure and danger and uh we aim on sharing as much of it as we can. Otto, you, you might have to show me how you got that horse out of trouble. I've seen Troy kind of flopping around and doing something very similar. I could use some pointers on maybe how to safely approach that situation. It only happens once or twice a week for me, so we're good. That's true. I said, we'll get you up to a few more times a week, Troy. <laughs> we'll get your heart rate up. That's uh, right. Yeah, Otto Troy needs no help with that. Uh, he does just fine on his own. <laughs> I can attest to that personally. Well, Otto, it's it's been great. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, it was good to get caught up with you, the things you've got going on, to hear more about your YouTube channel that you guys uh, are launching. Uh, I'm sure a lot of your fans are really going to enjoy it. I know I've enjoyed uh, the first bits that I've seen. Uh, so best of luck with that. And uh, we hope to have you on the podcast again uh, here in the near future. So thanks, Otto. Really appreciate it. Yeah, you're you're more than welcome, and I'm looking forward to coming over there and visiting and eating one of them killer breakfasts that you guys put on. By <laughs> golly, plenty. Woo! Yeah, fill me up. There's there's yeah. no doubt about it. Like Troy, I tried to get uh, Otto out there when I was there by myself, but evidently the the draw in my cooking wasn't there. I, I'm a terrible cook, so <laughs> we're we're fortunate that we have Laney and Roxanne around. Yeah, I heard uh, all the way. Hell, it was, I think that was Anchorage. Is it don't get over that bear cover, Lucas, by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> so true. Well, I don't think so. Well, anyway, joining all us. the jokes aside, thanks. Thanks for uh, inviting me on your show. Thanks, thanks Otto. Otto. Appreciate having you. Yep. Well, that was really cool uh, getting caught up with Otto. I suppose you haven't seen him for a while, Troy. No, you know, I haven't. I I got to see him last. I think the last time I got to spend time with Otto was when we were doing our sewer. Um, and we got to spend quite a few days with him. And, uh, you know, honestly, the three or four days we spent, the day I spent riding around him with, with, in a truck, um, what a treat. I mean, he is, what you see is what you get. He's genuine. He's smart. Uh He's he's got a big heart, cares about people. He's just uh, you can't help but love the guy. I uh, I've really grown fond of of Otto. So to to hear that one of our first guests was going to be Otto, I mean, wow, what a treat for us! Uh, what a treat for Homer! Uh, what a treat for Alaska! Yeah, yeah, so true. So just looking ahead, Troy, we've we've got some episodes planned. Of course, um, we've got Charlotte planned, and I believe Roxanne and Lainey are going to speak with Charlotte, and uh, they got some pretty interesting things that they're going to be talking about. Just uh, listening to Charlotte talk about it uh, here over the last couple of days, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, also, working on getting a couple of local mariners lined up so we can hear a little bit more from folks that are out there working on the sea that can maybe provide folks some perspective of of what to expect and maybe things that they would recommend that they do when they visit town uh also hoping to line up um one of the local birding experts uh homer's known for its birding and uh, it's very popular uh there's a there's a festival uh every may so i'm hoping to get some perspective from him and uh be able to share that you know with the folks that uh might be traveling up and want to catch uh some birds that they don't normally get to see around home yeah, you know what a treat you get. Uh, you get the two gems. You get Charlotte and Otto, and then uh, 
and then we get some some known people in the area that that are show you some of the art and some of the beauty of of Homer. And uh, I think I think for the people that want to come here, it'll be a great great for, thing for them to see. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, Troy, it's been good chatting today. I'll let you get back to uh, buying your tackle online. I'm sure uh, you're excited to do more of that, and uh, I'm going to work on trying to uh, make my way out of the Homer Harbor. Yeah. Good luck cutting ice uh, and be safe on the water. And uh, it's great talking to you, buddy. Yeah. Talk to you later, Troy. Take care, bud.